<clears throat> All right, here's our uh, latest update for what is still Tropical Storm Barrel. Barrel remains a tropical storm. Intensity has not changed much since this morning. So that's one bit of good news. However, it continues to track north-northwest across the Gulf toward the Texas coast, and it still could undergo a period of intensification before landfall, uh, which is now uh, really within about uh, 12 hours. So uh, we'll see uh, if it does undergo that intensification to a hurricane before landfall. There are no changes to the wind surge and flood-related watches and warnings or to the expected rainfall. Uh, there remains a threat of a few tornadoes, and this will become more of a threat as we go into tonight and into tomorrow. Here's a look at the three-day uh, track of the storm. You can see it uh, hits the Texas coast, turns more north and then northeast, and moves fairly quickly away. The hurricane warnings, as I said, the hurricane and tropical storm warnings haven't changed uh, since this morning. So you can see them listed there uh, with the red uh, being hurricane warnings. And I should say there's been no changes for our area. Here's a look at the uh, latest radar and observations. Uh, and you can see a fairly large circulation offshore. Uh, the hurricane is fairly broad, excuse me, the tropical storm uh, is fairly broad. There's really no well-defined eyewall at this point, but it could still tighten up and get better organized. So, uh, you know, certainly not hoping that happens, um, but something we'll have to watch for over the next 12 to 15 hours. Uh, Lance will be on with you tonight at 1030 to uh, give you an update on how the storm is doing. Uh, so look for that uh, webinar then. You can see some of the wind observations too. All these uh, values in red are wind gusts. So we can see some 54 mile per hour winds, 44 off to the northeast. You can see the counterclockwise flow. Even along the Texas coast now, we're getting pretty strong northeast winds. So if you remember a day or two ago, we talked about this being a small storm, but it's really not that way at all. Very large circulation, uh, a, a pretty strong tropical storm at this point. What we're showing here are uh, snapshots from a numerical model. Uh, don't focus on the track, but it, it does give you an idea of the timing of this system uh, at different points in time. So, uh, you know, we've got rain and bands coming in now, and as we get uh, toward uh, late tonight, toward midnight or so, you'll see the bulk of some heavy rain with the core of the system begin to lift into the area. Uh, and uh, you can see that represented in this model around 1 a.m. or so. Uh, by 7 a.m., take a look at this. Uh, in this model, the uh, storm has come on shore. Look at this comma shape here, this very uh, prominent band on the uh, eastern flank. Uh, in, with a pattern like this, you'd expect those very strong winds with the hurricane or, or tropical storm near the center and also some very heavy rain uh, wrapping in from the south and southeast. So, uh, you know, that period of time uh, late tonight, tomorrow morning is really a good place to be hunkered down. You know, not a good time to be out and about, uh, certainly including uh, the uh, commute tomorrow. Best to stay, stay put if you can. High winds, very heavy rain, potentially flooding around that time. And it also happens to be when our water levels due to surge are highest at the coast. So very, very stormy period uh, over not tonight and tomorrow morning. Now, by 1 p.m., we'll see that circulation sort of lifting into our northern counties and the uh, band I spoke of perhaps pivoting off to the east somewhat. So by 7 p.m. Monday, at least in this model, and in some of the other ones we've seen, uh, things should really be uh, tapering down. Won't spend too much time on this because there hasn't been any change today. Uh, hurricane warning in the bright red, tropical storm warning in the darker red, uh, very small area of hurricane watch 
for um, uh, for I believe uh, San Luis to Galveston. Um, again, just on the chance that the storm strengthens and shifts a bit east, but you know that that appears a bit less likely, at least for Galveston Island. And then on the right, we've got the surge-related hazards, uh, surge warning for our entire area. I did show this this morning, but I wanted to show it again to kind of reemphasize how, how strong those winds can be, uh, not only where the uh, storm makes landfall, but even well up uh, into inland areas, including some of our uh, population centers. Uh, so on the left, uh, we're looking at the probability of basically 40 mile per hour sustained winds, uh, tropical storm force winds. And you can see that is very high, really all the way from the coast up to uh, Bryan College Station and then on to the east, uh, you know, and, and near 100 uh, percent for areas uh, on the west side of Houston. And even if we raise that threshold to 60 mile per hour sustained winds, so now we're just a little bit below uh, hurricane force. Again, you see these areas highlighted here, uh, all the way down from uh, Matagorda up into uh, the west side of, of Houston, uh, and, and even Houston proper has pretty high chances. So uh, this is not going to. This is going to. These winds are going to be significant, perhaps uh, to the level of uh, leading to some power outages and some other damage uh, as 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 we uh, work through this system. Here's a look at the latest rainfall forecast. Uh, you can see there is a stripe there of uh, four to eight inches of rain. I think five to 10 inches is probably a better estimate for the rainfall pretty much across our area. Uh, and there is the possibility of some banding with greater than 10 inches. Uh, some of our numerical models even show maybe 12 inches of rain and, and some narrow bands. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to be wary of that. I showed you the storm structure, you know, around tomorrow morning. It, it does, definitely looks like some very high rain rates and potential for some flooding. Keeping on the flood theme, I showed this earlier. I won't spend a lot of time on it. Flood watch uh, for the whole area, uh, pretty much for the reasons we've been talking about. And from the National Center, uh, we are in a moderate risk, so that's pretty unusual to have a moderate flash flood risk or excessive uh, rainfall risk. So uh, this is definitely uh, going to be part of this event, we think. Looking at the, peach, the peak surge forecast, that is one thing that has changed. Uh, the storm surge unit uh, actually adjusted upward the uh, potential surge around Galveston Bay and uh, uh, you see from Port O'Connor to San Luis Pass, four to seven feet above normally uh, dry ground. So as the storm comes in with all those strong onshore winds uh, pushing water onto land, uh, with the surf on top of that, you know, we're looking at a very uh, dangerous situation uh, for, you know, coastal Brazoria, Matagorda, Jackson County, areas around Matagorda Bay, uh, Blue Water Highway. And then over to Galveston, Bolivar, and around uh, Matagorda and Galveston Bays. Uh, I showed this earlier just for the timing. You know, we've seen some water uh, rises already, um, but there should be a sharp rise as the storm pull, uh, makes landfall. Uh, and that's what these uh, charts are showing. Um, for the values, I, I would focus on those hurricane center uh, surge forecasts, not so much what we see here, although it is showing uh, up to about six feet uh, in this surge model as well around Galveston Bay. Tornado risk, again, won't spend a lot of time on this. You see the areas of concern, uh, you know, really the southern two thirds of our area through tonight and uh, our eastern, well, most of our areas, excluding the far northwest on Monday as this thing lifts out. I want to finish with this here, and then we'll uh, we'll uh, talk a little bit about hydrology with Katie. These are snapshots from Hervac uh, showing the storm center and the wind radii. And so let me explain what we're looking at on the left-hand side. This is a snapshot of 5 a.m. The blue circle is the area of tropical storm force winds, and you see it covers 
a good portion of the area, in, including Houston, Galveston, all the way down to Matagorda Bay. And uh, the yellow circle, these are the, your 60 mile per hour winds at 5 a.m. The red circle, these are hurricane force winds. Superimposed on that, we have the forecast cone. Remember that center can be adjusted really anywhere within that cone. So you can imagine this pattern sh being shifted uh, left or right uh, along that, uh, depending on that, the track. And on the right-hand side, we're looking at a snapshot at 9 a.m. All right, so 9 a.m. tomorrow, uh, you know, we're looking at uh, portions of Houston out to Sugarland and uh, Waller County and even uh, down perhaps uh, into Brazoria County of 60 mile per hour sustained winds. So again, these are the types of winds that we can get impacts, including damage and power power loss. Now at this point, I'd like uh, Katie to uh, speak to the river flood threat. Yeah, Dan, thanks. Uh, so not too much change from what we briefed this morning. There are a few additional moderate flooding points on the San Bernard, as well as a few additional minor river flooding points on the San Jacinto and the Houston Bayou system. Again, we're still focused on the La Baca Navada, Trace Palacios, and San Bernard rivers, but again, we still also need to monitor the tributaries um, as of the Brazos and Trinity, as well as the San Jacinto, um, just for any of those uh, bands that Dan was talking about. So we'll be continuing to keep an eye on that. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. All right, thanks, Katie. And you know, as always, uh, the river flooding uh, is going to continue to be an issue after the storm pulls away. So uh, we'll hear more and more about the uh, river flood aspect in the days ahead. So just to sum up, very few changes today, including the storm not intensifying, which is one uh, sliver of good news, but uh, nonetheless, it still could intensify, and whether it does or not, we are still looking at some high winds, surge, uh, flooding from rain, heavy rain, and even uh, possibility of tornadoes. So going to be a very stormy night and uh, Monday morning. Things do improve as we get into Monday evening, uh, so we can uh, start to recover. And, uh, and uh, you know, there, there is still a bit of uncertainty in uh, whether this thing does intensify, you know, barrel has been a challenge the whole way in terms of the track and intensity. So, uh, you know, maybe there's another surprise, uh, you know, hopefully on the downside. But, um, but yeah, we just did, we're kind of in a wait and see mode. I think all of us are uh, as we wait for this thing to come through uh, tonight and tomorrow morning. 